Yep. I would uh, like to hear uh, from Kurt Healing from Bas- Pro Basketball Talk, NBCSports.com, about this. He's obviously been covering it and um, suggested some uh, potential replacements for Mike Budenholzer. But first, Kurt, just your thoughts on the timing of this. We found out after they were eliminated that his brother tragically passed away. One of his brothers tragically passed away. Um, it feels like or it seems like some people have a problem with the optics of the timing that it is in bad taste or in poor taste. I, I would say that, you know, there's business and there's personal and the Bucks have to go on. What say you? Yeah, just that. Look, it, the timing sucks because of the personal stuff. But beyond just you've got to make the move. If you're going to hire that next coach and you want to move up Charles Lee, Charles Lee is in Toronto today interviewing for the Raptors job. He is mm-hmm. one of the front runners for the Detroit job. If you're going to promote him, you can't wait. If you want to hire Nick Nurse, you better do it before somebody else does. Like, they can't wait around while the the coaching carousel spins and then take what's left over. They either they had to kind of do this now, if they were going to get the guys they want to get, whoever that ends up being. They couldn't wait around. So, absolutely, the timing sucks. I feel bad for the Budenholzer family. I I I was in the room when Darvin Ham kind of let that slip and the handful of people who know all looked at each other like he was not supposed to say that. Like that was not something Mike wanted. I, I, well, I mean, he backed Darvin later, but I don't think it's something he wanted public. That's kind of not the person he is. It, that said, it sucks. It sucks, but for the Bucks, they didn't really have a choice. Right. So their choice of next, oh, I'm sorry, Natalie, you want to say something? No, I was just saying, right. I was agreeing. It's it's really yeah. just a, tif- a difficult situation. Yeah, and uh, certainly not to make light of it, but I mean, I think your feed item, Natalie, is is spot on for all of uh, the Greek freaks philosophizing. Like the Bucks proceeded as if this season was an abject failure. Um, so in terms of choices, you mentioned Charles Lee. Um, I guess it'd be so NBA for Nick Nurse and Frank Vogel who won championships before Mike Budenholzer yeah. to replace Mike Budenholzer since they have they, they know what it's like to be in his shoes. Uh, they know how quickly life comes at you fast in this game. Um, if you were advising Bucks ownership, um, who would you think would be the best fit for Giannis in particular, but to unlock and, and adjust when necessary? Who's the best? I mean, that's what Nick Nurse is known for, no? Yeah, it is. I think first off, you kind of touched on the real key, which is, Giannis, he is a extension eligible come, I think it's September 1st, but at some point this fall, it is all about keeping him. You have the best player or one of the best players on the planet. I, I'm not going to have that argument with Natalie today, but like you're this elite player. <laughs> <laughs> you can't let him go. You can't, the Bucks can't just replace him, right? So yeah. what does Giannis want if it's, he's a guy who likes his comfort zone. So maybe it is Charles Lee where you get a different voice in the room, but it's an assistant under Bud, so this isn't some sort of radical shift, but you're taking a guy who's never done it before and throwing him in, and maybe it works. Maybe it's Joe Missoula, maybe it's Steve Kerr, maybe it works great, but maybe it doesn't. If you want to make changes, Nick Nurse is your guy, right? I I think more than Vogel, Vogel's a little egoless. Nick Nurse comes in and is a guy who will make radical changes, who will make radical adjustments, who hey, we need a box and one. Let's just box and one this. Like, whatever it is, he is willing to try it. And I think that if I were them, I might go that way. I might do this because their window, they've got to keep Giannis happy, but also their window is getting small. It's just, and it's not Giannis. It's, you've got to re-sign Brooke Lopez this summer. He's going to be expensive. He's 35. Drew Holiday, uh, I'm sorry, Chris Middleton can opt out. You're going to have to re-sign him. Drew Holiday is extension eligible about when Giannis is like, if are you going to keep this core together? It's getting old and expensive. They've got a lot of decisions to make, and you've got to tie the coach into where you're going to go with that. Like, and Nurse is the guy who sh- shakes up the apple cart a little more, for lack of a God. That's a horrible. I don't even know where that phrase came from, but the, he's the guy that changes things for you. Yeah. Plus, Drew is talking about retiring. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, so I think, yeah, Drew's probably more ahead. comfortable retiring than any of them. Like I, that guy's got his whole. There is not a more balanced person and balanced life maybe in the league than Drew Holiday. And 
He yeah. and Lauren could walk away. He'd walk away and be happy with Lauren and they'd live they'd live a happy life. Yeah. All right. Um, so pivot into tonight. Let's talk about tonight. I'd love to you to help us set the table in terms of what to watch for. So first of all, Joel Embiid will receive his MVP tonight. So all is well that ends well. I wasn't here the other day for the announcement, Nat, but all is well that ends well. Joel Embiid gets his MVP ahead of, ahead of the game tonight. Uh, how do the Sixers, though, uh, take game three? That's a really good question, just because he really faded in the second half of that game. Like he, you could see part of it is you just don't get the conditioning when it's a leg injury, right? Like you can't keep running, doing the bike stuff. The conditioning seemed to be an issue. He seemed to wear down. And I don't know if that means more short shifts or something, but you're going to have to find a way to get him to step up. And then you're just going to need, I mean, he still was able to be a defensive force in the first half. You've got to find a way to extend that. Then you're going to need you need James Harden to be James, you know, more of Houston James Harden and less of Philadelphia James Harden. You're going to need Tyrese Maxey or is to step it just up. As simple, You're going to need somebody or a is it just as simple player. as Or is it just as simple, guys, as Harden going to Vegas real quick? I mean, I don't know if, he, you know, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if it's possible to hey, get, Doc was get it out. It. You know what I'm saying? Doc said he was good with it. Um, yeah. I mean, he used the Rodman example. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I nobody, At least nobody... It, at least in this case, Embiid didn't have to go to Vegas to physically drag Harden back to the right. Uh, right. I don't think they're gonna make a documentary about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not gonna make it into a movie or whatever. But I mean, it's it's, it's no. like we talk about with with pregame speeches or halftime speeches. When it works, it's great. It sounds great when it works. When he goes off like he did in Game One, if he had struggled and come to find out he was in Vegas, like that stuff is legendary. When you had the kind of game he had, yeah. <laughs> when you don't, exactly. it's problematic. You know, like everybody's an adult until, you know, you uh, you start messing think, with the church's money. I think you get a much more energized Philadelphia team back home. I think their role players step up. Maybe you get more from Yang or or other guys. I'm curious. Yeah. And we've talked about this. I still think a lot of this series just hinges on which Boston team shows up and how much how. How urgently do they play? Do they play like they did in game two or do they play like they did in Urgency game five is... against the Hawks, man? I don't I don't know what yeah. you get from them. Urgent well, yeah. that goes for a lot of people these days. Urgency seems to be the theme in the playoffs. Uh moving to the second game, uh Nuggets Suns. Natalie, I was trying to like I was looking, I was kind of being nosy. I was trying <laughs> to see if there was if there was a broom behind you because I get the I get the sense that that you kind of like you, you're like you're 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 hungry for a sweep, like you just like you got a broom somewhere in there that you're gonna break out <laughs> if, if if the Nuggets end up sweeping the Suns. I mean, sweep or gentleman sweep, and we're gonna have to have some conversations because <laughs> y'all overhyped that Suns team, and I'm saying y'all because I was not a part of that. Y'all overhyped. Oh, they're eight and eight with Kevin Durant. Then they were the favorite. You know, I don't know why because they got rid of all their bench depth. So to me, this was completely foreseeable. And Chris Paul being injured, like how is that not foreseeable either? Yeah. So to me, That's knowing just, all of those man. things, I didn't understand yeah. why everyone was so high on them. And now here they are down 2-0. And you know, it's, it's not looking good. So well, y'all tell well, me, some people tell me this man, Kevin Durant's the greatest or one of the top or a bad man, as Vinny likes to say. All I'm saying is I don't oh want to hear gosh. nothing. He should be able to get them at least one. We're not going to have no oh. shoe size excuses. Oh he oh got to be able to get them at least a game. That's all I'm saying. Kurt, I've never seen somebody who could take circumstances <laughs> and fit them into an agenda like Natalie. <laughs> 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 it's like... I can't, I don't know, what is, you and Kevin Durant, it's just, y'all need to work something out. Y'all need to get in the room and, and like, just get a meeting or something. I mean, people were high on him because, oh, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and it wasn't that long ago now, granted, the Clippers had their own issues, talk about injuries and who's showing up or who's in street clothes. It's like, you know, it was the Clippers, but still, I mean, there was a lot of reasons to be high on the Suns. Kurt, I think it was really a matter of, even though they were the one seed, is, and look, Chris Paul, I, I, I've never seen somebody that snake bitten, so injury notwithstanding, yeah, and not this is not. I'm not taking anything away from the Nuggets. You know they've earned this lead, and I don't know that people were ready to recognize the Nuggets as the threat that they now so clearly are. 
Right, because they were a little boring this year. There wasn't drama. They didn't fire their coach. I mean, their coach is one of the four that's been around since 2019. Like, they, they've... Oh, that's a long time. They've been... <laughs> that's, that's a really long time, isn't it? I mean, it, yeah. it's true, by the way. There's four coaches that lasted since 2019. Yeah. Spolster, Kerr, Pop, yeah. and Malone. That's it. Correct. Um, they, because of the consistency, they're just kind of boring, right? Like, oh, we know what Jokic is going to do. Hey, Jamal Murray went off tonight, and there's some, hey, look at how well um, Aaron Gordon's playing or what have you. And, hey, Bruce Brown fits in great, but it's not been sexy like, hey, we went and got Kevin Durant. So I think we all look past him. And I was one of those guys, before the playoffs started, I picked the Suns based on the, well, they've got Kevin Durant. He is capable of carrying a team. And I think, by the way, Natalie, I think you get, probably tonight, like you get a Kevin Durant game where he just takes over and he wins them a game. But after seeing them against the Clippers, Sands, you know, the Clippers, the Clippers role players, I was like, oh, the depth is a problem. The depth is a real problem. The defense is, is a real problem. It's stuff I think that they can fix this offseason, like watch out for them next year. But this yeah. year, it's an issue. And Natalie, I'm just telling you, be careful what you wish for, given these. Let's give the Nuggets a bunch of time off before they face my team. Be careful what you wish for. Oh, I'm not wishing so, for them. I've actually <laughs> said I want them to push it longer, but I'm just saying, like, if they don't, I'm just telling you we're going to have to have conversations about Kevin Durant. Uh, you know what? And honestly, I, I, I can't wait to have that conversation. We're not going to do it today. we got to let you go, Kurt, because we got to get the break. But I can't wait to have that conversation because you can't say that the Suns' depth is an issue and their depth is an issue, and now this is some indictment or referendum of Kevin Durant. Did swept? they give up did they give up that depth to get if Kevin Durant? Yes. 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 Absolutely. He wouldn't be the first or the last to please that. He can't get swept. He can't be getting so, swept so much he, and he can't get he can't get swept in the second round by the number one seed? Oh the horror. Like okay. That doesn't mean he's not one of the handful <laughs> of greatest players of all about. time. The passes, the passes y'all want to continue. It's not a pass. Posting it's reality. Down. You're he's he's still one there. of the best guys walking Holy. the face of the earth, man. What did Kevin Durant do to you other than deliver you two champions championships? Oh, I'm just I'm trolling. <laughs> I'm trolling. <laughs> Thank you, Kurt. Oh, he was the best player on that team. Not was not. <laughs> Tell her, Kurt. Tell her, Kurt. <laughs> Incredible. Say it two again. finals MVPs Say it again. Kevin is Say owed, it again. owed finals MVPs. He's owed them. Hey, thank you for watching Brother From Another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.